<laughs> Who are you expecting, the Pope? Is you, have you been watching the show any this week at all? The Tonight Show? Yeah. You probably have noticed that we don't come on at our regular time. Right. Uh, because of the Pope's uh, trip to Poland, NBC has been delaying, I guess, uh, our show about 15 minutes, which is all right, as I said last night. After all, it's the Pope, and I don't mind that. But... <laughs> But I'm a little annoyed at NBC because I understand next week we're being delayed for coverage of Dr. Eugene Scott's pilgrimage to his birthplace in El Monte. <laughs> Last week we're delayed when Reverend Ernest Angley unveiled his new toupee. Said it's a miracle. <laughs> the Pope has got the Polish government kind of upset over there. And they're not going to have, they said this is it, the foreign visitors. Yeah. Uh, they just canceled Lawrence Welk's Polkathon in Krakow. <laughs> You know, I don't need this job. I'm a, I'm a nook, I'm a nook and cranny inspector for Mrs. Thomas. But uh, <laughs> I feel good tonight. I, I saved a life last night. Boy. Yeah, I was driving home the Pacific Coast Highway. I looked, I saw a glow in the distance, and I hit the brakes, slowed down just in time. <laughs> And it was a uh, George Hamilton wearing a reflective collar. <laughs> the moon was hot. George goes out in the moonlight and gets, gets on. Well, the air today in Los Angeles, according to the Air Quality Management District, is unhelpful for sensitive people. Isn't that terrific telling people, sensitive people, not to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Here's a, uh, I thought it was kind of amusing. Here's a late report, uh, late report from the newsroom. Jacoby and Myers just rented office space in Orson Welles' pants. <laughs> Jacoby Myers is a law firm. <laughs> Look, I have to catch a bus. <laughs> According to the papers this morning, um, I guess it was on television, they had a big benefit in Hollywood last night, a lot of Hollywood personalities there for a thing they called the decade of preservation. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's for preservation of old motion pictures that are in stages of uh, deteriorating. Years ago, they made film on uh, what they call a flammable nitrate stock. Right. And a lot of the old pictures were made, I guess, prior to 1940 or something like that, will just turn to dust. And so they try to transfer them now, and that's what they're being preserved for. I made a film once um, that's being preserved. <laughs> oh, come on now, I did. Looking for Love with Connie Francis. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're preserving that film for the same reason that uh, Nazi footage is preserved. <laughs> so that something like that will never happen again. <laughs> Actually, they're transferring Looking t uh, for Love to flammable nitrate stock. <laughs> the picture was bad. It was, uh, it was so bad they were showing it in drive-outs. <laughs> That's the job I want when you lean here and watch. <laughs> Do you notice for every good picture there's a sequel? Are you getting a little tired of the sequels? I mean, I guess they're all right. Superman 3 is out already. Psycho 2 is out. Um, I just saw an ad for a new one. It says, Charles Bronson is Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> He's a lean, mean, fighting machine, yes. Gandhi 2, no more Mr. Nice Guy, rated R. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story on the uh, front page, I guess, all the major newspapers today about the Senate. They are going to, I guess they passed the law, they're going to put a stronger warning label on cigarette packages. Yeah, the ones now... I think the one now reads, cigarette smoking is hazardous to your health, right? You know what the new one's going to say? Warning, cigarette smoking will causes cancer, emphysema, heart disease, may complicate pregnancy, and is addictive but it tastes good like a cigarette should. <laughs> I, uh... Next year, they're gonna even have a stronger warning. It says, suck on this weed and you're dead, turkey. <laughs> uh... Do you ever notice every time you pick up a magazine, there's a different Marlboro man? Yeah. That's because they keep burying them out in the rain. <laughs> Do 
Did you see those wonderful pictures from the space shuttle, Challenger? Boy, weren't they sensational? Absolutely sensational. And do you know what's amazing? We have now a woman in space. First woman in space, American woman, I guess. And time flies. It was only 20 years ago that Jackie Gleason said to Alice, How'd you like to take a trip to the moon? <laughs> Anyway, returns tomorrow, I think. And Dr. Sally Ride conducted one of the more interesting experiments up there. She hung out her pantyhose to dry <laughs> on a satellite and retrieved them with the robot arm. Did you happen? <laughs> Guess you didn't see that. I have some news before we start the show to tell you. I hate to tell you, but animal trainer Jim Fowler is on the show tonight, and during rehearsal, his python got loose. <laughs> I mentioned that so if you feel something coiling around your leg, either you're getting lucky with the person next to you, or you're in deep trouble. One of two. Poor Jim, he had a rough afternoon, too. The anesthetic wore off while he was neutering a hippo. Uh, you all know Jim Fowler. Jim is the one who was on uh, with Marlon Perkins in Wild Kingdom. Uh, Jim was always out in the bush with a wild pig. Uh, while Marlon was back in the tent, had, uh, had just tranquilized a native girl and was having a banana daiquiri. While Jim was out of uh, Marlon was always very mellow, and Jim was out doing the heavy stuff. Uh, anyway, we have Miss Lauren Bacall with us tonight. Yeah. One of the truly great Hollywood stars. We, uh, the great Pete Fountain is going Ooh. to play. Jim Fowler and... The mighty Carson Art players will perform. Yeah, yeah sure. So stay where you are. Yeah. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> Is out. We must have some. Yeah, well, Jim Fowler's here tonight. I don't know exactly what he is bringing, but some exotic mm -hmm. uh, wildlife, I guess, or maybe not so wild. <laughs> does, it, does the shuttle land in Cape Kennedy tomorrow, or is it, it going to come in? It all depends on the weather. Do they you still haven't decided? Do you I know it, it depends on the weather, but it, it was either going to land at Cape yeah. Kennedy or at Edwards, and I wondered if they have determined. We'll find You're out. Calling We're Kim? calling now. Call the shuttle and find out. Here goes those people. When are, are you sitting, landing? Those people are sitting down there at the. Mm -hmm. Cape Kennedy should know. Anyway, my first guest, as you know, is uh, from Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Uh, he's also a director of the Explorers Club, and he's currently building a new park that he designed in Stone Mountain, Georgia, called the Animal Forest. Would you welcome Jim Fowler? Jim. Easy. The music, you see. You want me to... Uh, Wow. Shh. Will, will, he, will she or he stay there? Good. Okay. That bad, is a... Uh, bad leg. Look at that. Yeah. Well, this is a... Artificial leg. What's well, a very unusual bird. It really is. It's one of the... The reason I want to show it is to show some of the, the techniques of modern science that are able to take a bird who normally wouldn't have been able to make it. It's a peg leg crane. Got a wing. Yeah. Wooden leg. <laughs> Jim, I know we're on late at night, and on a primetime show, you'd probably bring a healthy bird. Uh, <laughs> we got we got a factory second crane here. <laughs> the thing is, is that a crane? Well, it's a crane. It's a Stanley crane, and frankly, it's one of the few birds that we can. Well, one of the few times I've just been able to let an animal wander around here. You've, you know, we've had quite a few animals here, but you usually have to get them pretty isolated. Uh, hey, me hearty. I will. I'll watch her a little bit, but. Uh, it's like Long John Silver. <laughs> what happened to, to, well, all to right, the bird? Well, there's quite a story behind it. This is from the Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha. And this crane has been around quite a while, about six years, with these very slight... This, by the way, is another leg for it, in case that one has a problem. <laughs> and, uh, how did, how did and, the bird lose its leg to begin with? Well, it, uh, these have extremely large wing spreads. Let me go show you the wing okay. spread on this one again. Hang on. While Jim is getting the one-legged crane... <laughs> I'll be here at the desk having some coffee. <laughs> is, that a, is that a meal crane? It's a... Yeah, Stanley actually doesn't know what she is. Uh, Stanley is, is imprinted to human beings. She's a she. She's but a she. I don't know why they call her 
call, call her staff. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, anyway, it's been imprinted to humans, so probably we'll never have any courtship behavior. Oh. Uh, unless it finds out something on the show that might well, give it. <laughs> I know how Stanley feels. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, uh, see the, the wing spread and what happens this got into a storm and was blown into a fence they got out of control especially at night and lost his leg so dr ted simmons is one of the few guys in the country who knows how to make wooden legs for cranes and that's it well not the, many you got you're gonna look in the yellow pages to see <laughs> crane legs to go <laughs> i met dr lee simmons I said, but dr simmons has done a great job on on advancing this kind of technique and i think it's very interesting to, to see the way that he's doing incredible. things to help animals now you say you have an extra do you have to change that frequently or does well, it, it will come off it he he uh he loses it fairly often he goes yeah. swimming right and the thing loses up and he loses so they have to go hunt in the grass and find it you, you, or make another one you find it so, funny a one-legged crane funny eh jim <laughs> But the crane, really look, know, right? crane does not look in any discomfort at all. No, it's a it's a real cool crane. No question. About that. <laughs> this is from. Uh, hey, from, look at my leg. Where does, uh, was, where does this crane yeah, live generally was, outside of in the zoo? It's in South Africa, and yeah. it's one of the largest cranes in the world. They have a they're very attractive, as you can see. But you'll see those if you go. I was just in South Africa. Not you mentioned long ago. that, and you yeah. said you uh, got a couple of fractured uh, ribs, tangled with a. Old, I mean, a wildebeest. It turned out to be an old wildebeest, but <laughs> I should have handled one a little older. I yeah, think. yeah right. <laughs> Broke a few ribs, but that was on Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Yeah. You can probably see that one. Of these is that crane endangered? I mean, not here tonight. But it I mean, is. Yeah. <laughs> is that an endangered it is, species? Uh, it is becoming less and less. Uh, beautiful bird. Isn't it? It's a beautiful bird, but it's sort of one of the characteristics of the southern part of Africa that you'll yeah. see. Well, that's lovely. And that's uh, unusual. So, yeah, and we can. We, I think we can just leave standing. Will Stanley, Stanley be okay? There, yeah. Okay, oh, you want to do a commercial here? Yeah. We'll bring out the next, uh, Tell me get whatever it is, Stanley. Here. Got your leg, sweetheart. <laughs> Long John Silver. Amy Hardy's will get the treasure. <laughs> hey, the famous box animal. Oh, I mean, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I mean, oh, oh, oh. This is... I don't know when Jim gives you me, gloves. Uh, this well, is, you know, this could be trouble. After doing this uh, show a while, you know, you, you, you end up having to take more and more chances. Says live animals. <laughs> All right, what? Uh, what this is we? a strange animal from, from Australia, and there. What the hell is that? Exactly. <laughs> it's pretty hard to beat this. In fact, uh, you know, you talk about the creatures that we imagine on shows like Star Wars, right? I don't think there are many things as weird as the. Spiny echidna. The spiny what? Echidna. Spiny echidna. Echidna. Right. Will it bother Stanley at all? This is, these are two spiny echidna. <laughs> two. See, count them. And uh, <laughs> the thing to be careful about. Uh-huh. All right, we'll see if we can. Now, obviously, there are very few animals have ever had defensive mechanisms like this, right? Well, are those all quills? Those are all quills. Are they sharp? They're extremely sharp. That's why you got the glove. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I'll show you one of the tricks of picking him up. You notice how he's trying to go into a corner. Right. Uh, these are nocturnal. They're found in Australia, Tasmania. So he's trying to burrow under the desk. Yeah, and they're very powerful. They can, if you push on them, they can do a job on you. So I'll show you a little, some of the techniques. The Aborigines catch these. Well, this one is fairly gentle, as you see. Uh -huh. Let me use this one and see what he does here. The Aborigines catch these by pushing them. And when you push them, they put the foot out, and you can then grab the foot. Right. Let me show you how to do that. Come try it on this one. <laughs> Can I? Be sure to learn that, John. Well, feel, feel you feel never know when you have to get a spiny it. echidna. <laughs> I was saying this morning, boy, I better know how to do it. When you, when you push here, you see how that foot comes out? Yeah. And then you take the foot, right? And what? Pick it up off the, off the floor a little bit. That's right. <laughs> and then, then you can put your hand under him like this. Yeah. And it'll curl up in a ball. Hold this, like so. What do you mean, hold that? Well, it won't go through the glove. But just look at look at the oddity of that creature. Now, <laughs> now while you're holding that, I've got... this is from the uh, Children's Zoo in the St. Louis That's Zoo. a weird-looking animal. It's but weird, those are sharp, I'm look... telling you. Yeah, and it's a fascinating animal. This is a... They're from Australia. Yeah, and it's an egg-laying mammal. 
which is like the platypus. Like the platypus. They lay an egg, and then they put the egg into a pouch. Now, the old joke is, how do they mate? And you say, very (laughs) carefully, yes. Uh, But they... they See, with all the spines. The... uh, The egg goes into a pouch only during the uh, breeding season. The pouch that, That's a strangest. I've never seen one of those. Before. Yeah, it's a very unusual animal. There's spiny no echidna. But that's the spiny echidna. And this, you, like I say, the St. Louis Zoo has got a, a great exhibit of Australian animals. That's fascinating. Charlie, Charlie Hessel set this out. Now, one thing about it, though, that's interesting. Yeah. When the young it hatches from the egg about seven to ten days after it's put in the pouch. Right. Starts growing, of course, it develops bristles. And the female knows exactly when to take it out of that pouch. I would think so. They go, oh, oh. Okay. Have you ever seen one of those before? No, never. That's a strange animal. It's a very strange animal. This one is much harder. Now, this one will roll up in the ball more. You notice their defensive situation here? I suppose those go back to almost, you know, really thousands of millions of years. Yeah. It's It's a very ancient animal, of course. They've survived because of this obviously excellent protective technique. Well, didn't you, did your animal eat this? Uh, very few are successful in doing that, although <laughs> there are a few that can, yeah. Okay, we'll right. take a break and we'll, we'll do a commercial and we'll come right back with something else. <laughs> Hello. Ben was playing softly because Jim Fowler's here tonight. We, so far, we have had a, a one-legged crane, a spiny echidna, and we've got something that's going to do something here. Jim? Yeah, we've got something a little different here. See, now that I know, that's a bear. Is this bear okay? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Oh, not That's bad. all. <laughs> Yes, sir. There's been a bear in my soup. Get out of here. Oh, look at look at that. He's a great little bear. And full of and strong. And he's very, very strong. Extremely strong. Also oh. has his own. Uh, he just touched you, did he? Oh, well, he bit me. No, there's no, no, there's no blood. There's but no he blood. Get me a little. That's right. No problem. We've got. He does. We've uh, got mutual home insurance. <laughs> Marlon used to get into those commercials very good. If a moose sits on your face, would you be protected? Well, you would with Mutual of Omaha. <laughs> Great segues into the commercial. Uh, anyway, I want well, to is, that, is that a black, black bear? I know he's black yeah, in color, but is that what they call a black a, bear? A young black bear. Is this what so. you find in the national parks? Exactly. And this time of year, by the way, if you're moving into that country, you're liable to see them. It's a good idea to become bear-wise and learn about the habits of bear like you would... Most people will try to young. feed them or taunt them, and that's a no-no, that's right? right? And you shouldn't carry candy bars and leave them in your sleeping bag and things like that. Bears will go foraging for food, won't yeah. they? And if you're in the sleeping bag and they want some food... They will unzip the bag? Yeah. <laughs> no. People make a mistake. They see a bear and they think it's a Disney character. That's right. And they want to feed them and cuddle them, and yeah. bears are... Uh, you and know they're why. Very, they're very... I'll tell you what else... Don't drink are. that out of heads, or you'll... <laughs> As you'll notice, they, that, uh, that bear will hibernate for a year. <laughs> he gets a slug of that. Well, the other thing, you know. <laughs> that bear will go, that bear will go into camp. Hey, you got any food? <laughs> hey. <laughs> got over here for you, Here we go. Yeah, come here. Yeah, here. Only iced tea. Feed him out. <laughs> Feed him out of this thing. What is? What is? What do we got here? Oh, he likes this. I'm gonna show you some. That bear is hungry. <laughs> When did you last feed this animal, Jim? Over here, hold that. <laughs> Let him have that one, Johnny. I'll get him. Let him have that one. Let him have that one. Let's have a little decency here while. Animal starve. <laughs> how old is the? How old is the? There's a bear cub, right? How old is the bear? <laughs> he's about. He's about. He's about <laughs> you're all, he's hey, I want to show you a little how agile they are. If you ever think about t- climbing a tree, do they hibernate? They the do hibernate. In fact, I was in a 
I was in a cave, in a hibernating cave den with a female once. And uh, the young are born, they're about this big, and yeah. then the females sound asleep. Right. And the, uh, the young... <laughs> The young ones are... Well, I don't know if we're going to have any more. What happens, Jim, when we run out? <laughs> Did the bear... We'll, uh, does the bear do any tricks? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll bring this one back when it's about 400 pounds with six bottles. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll show you how agile this bear is. Show, you take it away from him, Jim. I'm not. You may have to help me over here, Johnny. You'll hold the bottle you bet that you. end, all right? Right here. Over here. Now, wait. Oh, he's going to come across here like. Right. Oh, wait, I, I, I'll show you how. There you go. Look at that. Now, he can actually walk. We're just training him. This, by the way, is part of a Chapter 1 uh, school education program. <laughs> Let me, let me show you something here, because he does have strong claws. Yes, I don't he does have strong claws. Here we go. Come on. Here, come on. Here we go. Come on. There. Now, let's see you walk over here. Come on. Walk. Come on. We're just showing him how, how agile they are now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up. 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 <laughs> up. Come on. Aww. There come. All right. There you go. He's just learning a little bit of the walking, but they have feet that are very similar to human beings. This will be grow to 400 pounds? Yeah. Oh, man, it's so strong right now. You will not believe the, the power in these arms. They take a big bottle when they yeah. get that. <laughs> but uh, this is going is being used by John Marone in school lecture programs right. in Maryland. Oh, well, that's wonderful. And uh, for kids and things. But there are a lot of fascinating things about even a young bear. Right. If you see them personally like this, you know. Whoa. Oh. Is the bear all right? No, yeah. He's all right. Come on. He's all right. Okay. He's, yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Jim, thanks for being right. here as usual. It's always fascinating. Good. Your trips here are. Uh, Thank everybody, you. everybody raves about them. Thanks for being here. Oh, look at you. aspiring actors had a limited number of places in which to seek employment. They could appear in movies or on the stage or in television programs. But in recent years, there's been a new field that offers opportunities for actors to earn a living in the field of television commercials. Recently, an article in the Wall Street Journal described a unique school which teaches people how to be successful actors in TV commercials. Let's look in now at a typical day at a school for commercial actors. Good morning, class. I'm Professor Farkner. <laughs> and welcome to the Commercial Actor School, where today you will learn the three R's of acting in commercials. And those three R's are repetition, reiteration, and redundancy. Uh, professor, yes. all those words mean the same thing. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Remember, hitting the public over the head makes us bucks, bucks, bucks. Now, today you'll also learn honesty, integrity, and professional ethics. Tomorrow, we'll teach you to forget all that crap. <laughs> if you want to do be honest, do Mother Teresa's taxes. <laughs> One. <laughs> now, class, one of the biggest advertisers is the automobile industry, so it's important today that we all learn how to sell cars. Young man, if you're going to be a commercial actor, you have to speak up. Use high volume and be loud. Now, what, what do you want? I gotta go to the bathroom. Louder? I gotta go to the bathroom. I can't hear you. I gotta go to the bathroom! It's out the door, down to the left, down to the left, down to the left. <laughs> Remember. In commercials. 
If you can't get the viewer to turn down the volume, you're not doing your job. Do you understand that? Do you care? All right. Would you come up here, please? Your name? Uh, Bob McLean. Bob, uh, now, how would, you, how would you sell this car? Well, uh, this full-size American sedan gets about 12 miles to the gallon and seats six, although they're a little cramped. And the price, of course, is for the stripped-down no, version. No, 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 no. Bob, you broke, first of all, the two cardinal rules of automobile commercials. First, you're mentioning facts. <laughs> and you're also mentioning the automobile. Now, here's how to sell a car. First, you slap a good-looking girl in a slinky evening gown on the hood. <laughs> if that doesn't get their attention, you have a wildcat jump on the roof. <laughs> and if all else fails, you get a tall, dark, foreign dude <laughs> who talk about tradition and fine Corinthian leather. Now, just what the hell Corinthian leather is, we haven't the slightest idea, but it sure sells cars. Now, class, you'll <laughs> all... You'll need all of your acting skills to be a commercial actor because you'll be called upon to portray some roles that bear no relationship whatsoever to real life. For example, this young mother. My baby skin is so soft and tender. That's why I wouldn't use anything but Jackson's baby powder. Very good. Now, class, this lady is a commercial actress. Thank you, Miss Whitmore. Would you just stay there? Now, will the real mother come out and collect her baby? <laughs> We're in the size with this one. TV commercial actors have their own language. Now, when we say is bologna, men's elasticized briefs, bathroom tissue, for perspiration wetness, and for queasy, uncertain stomach. What we mean, of course, is bologna, skivvies, toilet paper, B.O., and barfing. <laughs> The field of commercial acting is open to all ages, even senior citizens like this gentleman. Would you come up here, sir? Now, sir, you could play a trusted old grandpa and sell products uh, that advertise natural old-fashioned goodness like whole grain breads, jams, and jellies, or this lemonade mix here. You take that and pops if you'll just read that copy. Country store lemonade mix. It's got that good country taste that's darn near as good as the lemonade that my Martha made me when we sat on the front porch swing, listening to the crickets chirping and the band a-playing on the 4th of July evening. Wonderful. Now try the product. <laughs> this stuff sucks. <laughs> hey, uh, a, good, a good rule. Good rule of thumb, Gramps, is try to restrain yourself while the camera is rolling, but good try. Thank you very much. Well, class, that's all for today. Possibly too much. <laughs> now, tomorrow, don't forget to bring a pair of comfortable walking shoes for our full-figure workshop. We're taking an all-day hike inside Jane Russell's bra. <laughs> Uh, here's quite a remarkable lady. She uh, displays all of the magic and confidence that the whole world has in the award-winning musical Woman of the Year, which is here at the Amundsen Theater through September 7th, played on 17th, played on Broadway for many, many months. Would you welcome, please, Miss Lauren Bacall. <laughs> It's like walking through a minefield tonight. 
Sorry, we've had, we had some animals out here a, a moment ago before you. Oh, I'm sorry I missed them. Did you miss them? Any relatives of mine? <laughs> <laughs> we had a cute little bear and a crane and a strange-looking animal. Oh, I love How are animals. you? Good to see you. I'm very well, thank you. I'm, uh... I'm very excited at being back here in California. Yeah, how does it again. feel? You've been on Broadway how long with the play? Well, I was there for a year and a half. Is that long? Yes, it's very long. Yeah, did you think yeah. when you started that it would have any idea that it would run that long? Well, you know, you always... These days, with the, with the, the cost of putting on a right. show now in New York or really anywhere, it's yeah. so expensive. And especially a musical, you have to give up a year of your time or... Right. I mean, or they never... I mean, the investors can never make sure. their money back. So, being the wonderful human being I am, yes. <laughs> I agreed to give up a year of my life. And then, because I also spent all my money, I said, well, I'll extend for another few mm -hmm. months because I need to bake a little bread. Year and a half, that's a long run. That's a long run, yes. I play. Eight times a week, it is long. Yes, yeah. it is. Do you, do you ever find yourself, um, I'm sure it happens to you. You're out there, you've done a play so many times, you're so familiar with it. It almost becomes too familiar. And oh, sometimes, definitely. Sometimes you reach a point where you said, did I, did I do this did line I say before? That? Did I say that already? Or did I say that in the matinee and I yes. haven't said it yet tonight? Right, Does that exactly. happen? Exactly. I know. And today's a two-show day, as you yeah. know. But um, here, the thing that is so wonderful and, and kind of interesting, it's really a first that we've done this time. Right is we have redone this show what I hear for the you. tour, which has never, not as long as I've been in the business, right. which is only, of course, about a week and a half. <laughs> sure. I'm so young and innocent. Uh, it has not been, uh, it's never been done before. Yeah. And because, uh, well, there were things that really never were straightened out or never were done as much as any of us would have liked them to have been done. Right. And there were songs that were going to be written for additional songs that were right. going to be written that kind of were never done. And then once the show is open, of course, you don't really change it very much. Right. And so for the tour, it was agreed that we would do all of this. And then That's we great. have this, uh, and we were very fortunate in getting Joe Layton, who is... That's top drawer stuff. Now, oh, yeah. well, I, I'm so in love with him that I can hardly well, bear it. Well, that's great. It. But he's... Um, I mean, his contribution has been so extraordinary. Yeah. His, his concept and his whole use of the musical, yeah. the, you know, the, the right. medium of the musical theater. And it's, uh, so even people that have seen the show feel that it's a new show, which is I'll terrific. And it makes again. me feel yeah. good. You You'd better I come. Will, I will. You yeah, had I'm better coming. come. You're and everyone here had better come. Yes, or she will come and there. Jim yes. Fowler will come with a bear to your house. <laughs> <laughs> you are not especially um, enamored or fond of critics, are you? I don't know how you can say that, John. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think... I think the feeling's quite mutual, actually. Yeah? I'll tell you what, what uh, I don't like about critics. <laughs> I think they are seldom qualified to criticize. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I feel... It, it is my feeling that in most cases, uh, they have been unsuccessful as either playwrights or novelists or any other kind of writer or performers mm -hmm. or in some other field and that what is left for them is to sit and knock everybody else. Yeah. And I don't think they very often know uh, where the different contributions begin and end. Right. In a show, for example, they don't know what the director has contributed, what the choreo choreographer yeah. has contributed, what the actor has contributed. They, they really do not know. Do you know what I find strange? What? All critics, if they're really good critics, should be able to perceive qualities or bad qualities mm. in a show. Mm. You could, a play can open or a movie can open, and a critic will go, and the next day you read the reviews. One critic will be absolutely raving. Everything is wonderful. The other critic will say it's a terrible show, old right. whatever, right. so forth. Right. You say, now, if they're both really good critics and know the theater or know yes. uh, motion pictures, how can they become so two opposite views? Obviously, not everybody can like everything. No. But, but I've never been able to understand It's that. opinion to begin with. Sure. It is an opinion and not a qualified opinion, as I said before. But it is... Uh, it is their moment of power, you see. Uh -huh. It's like going through customs, and those guys in uniform, they've got you, <laughs> yeah, you right. know? Well, it's the same thing when, it, when, it, when uh, a critic writes a review. That is his moment to tell everybody off yeah. and to show all of the creative people that he's better than they are, no, and that right. he can make them or break them. You got it. It's like therapy and here tonight. Gonna get it's us like therapy, not you. No. Huh? I think Jackie Gleason once said about critics, it was kind of interesting. He says, they have the map, but they don't know how to drive the bus. Oh, very good. You know? Very good. We'll take a break. Very We're going to come right back. Stay where you are.
You just told me during the break you quit smoking for the fifth time. Congratulations. Fifth time. Thank you. Just in time for the new warning. That's very good. Is it a new warning? Out. Yeah, I'm putting this one out. I'm, oh. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it. No, but it makes a big difference vocally. Big I bet it does, doesn't oh, it? Oh, gigantic, yes. You think you can stay with it this time? I intend to. Good for you. That's what I say every time. But this time, I don't feel the need every now and then. Oh, give me no. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't bother you a bit, I no. can tell. No, <laughs> no, every now and then I get the urge. But... Yeah. Somebody told me uh, opening night you got flowers from uh, an old friend of yours, Catherine Hepburn. True. Whom you admire greatly, I know. Well, Katie is a very good friend of mine. Um, she's uh, godmother to my young son. And um, we've been friends since 1951, African Queen days. So that's... Uh, a minute or two. I don't want a great picture. Oh, <laughs> you know they had that on cable the other night? Did they? On played, cable? Oh, well, I mean on the satellite, uh, whatever You're it is. kidding. I thought it was, but I've seen it on regular television, so I guess they've taken it off and then oh, and now... It was, it was so good. What yeah, it still is picture. good. Wow. Yeah. I must say, between Houston and Bogart and Hepburn, it would be hard to do better than that. Yeah, that's not know? bad. And they will last anyway. That, all of those films... Yeah. What was your favorite picture of all times that you, you would like that to see? That I was in? Yeah, you were or in that, that you, I was... Or that you'd like to see? Who was an idol when you were young that you really... Leslie saw? Howard. Leslie Howard, oh, the great English actor. Oh, I was mad. Quiet, yes. I was the only one that left Gone with the Wind saying, Oh, Ashley, Ashley. Everyone was screaming about Rhett, and I was, Ashley. I Just give me Ashley. That weird, <laughs> nothing. I want him. <laughs> give me Ashley. Give me Ashley. Betty Davis, I know you were a fan. Oh, yes. Oh, gigantic. Still am. Yeah. I think she's one of the uh, most extraordinary movie stars that has ever been. And if they, if they ever did a, a true retrospective of Betty Davis movies on television, yeah. I mean, the, today's generation would see not only the beauty of the woman, yeah. which was extraordinary, but the variety of things she could play. She never her thought of herself that way. We had her, she was here a couple months ago. Yeah. And she never thought of herself as really attractive. And oh. she was when she was Great young. Great looking. Was really... Oh. Staggering. Unique, unique. Oh, unique. And, but, I mean, re remember Jezebel and Doc Victory. And, oh, wow. And, she, and she's still working. Still working. Yes, but she had to put an ad in the paper. Don't you remember years ago? That's right. She had to advertise for a job. Now, if you can imagine that you don't think that this business has a problem, <laughs> if someone like Betty Davis has to advertise and say, you know, I'm out of work, uh, how about it, guys? Have you that's, forgotten all about me? That's something wrong. Something's yeah. wrong somewhere. Definitely, definitely. But she doesn't have to advertise anymore, yeah. fortunately. You once said that you, uh, the ups and downs in your life have been, may have been more downs. Now you're on a, now you're on a big high. You're on an up in a period. Now. Well, it is my uh, fondest hope, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just, I feel, I mean, I've slid enough times and my derriere is kind of sore, so I would like to give it a rest and climb for a while. Climb yes, for a while. If I can. <laughs> but I think everyone's life goes in cycles. You know, I mean, when you get hit with the bad stuff, I know you don't know about that. No, no, no. But no. When, <laughs> when you do, you really, they really lay it on you pretty good. You have to keep your sense of humor. You, you really Without do. that, all is Or you lost. have to rent it. If you don't have it, you must you rent it. You must keep or lease. Loan something. Le lease a sense of humor. Absolutely. Peter, are we going to do it? Why am I speaking English all of a sudden. You mentioned Leslie. Uh, uh, yes, uh. the commercial, which she'll return in just a moment. The scarlet We are, we got backed up a little bit tonight and short of time. I'm going to put Pete Fountain on to close out our show because we're a little short of time, but he has his own club in New Orleans and he's going to be at the um, Carson City, Nevada Jazz Festival on June 25th and 26th. Would you welcome Mr. Pete Fountain? Yes. Thank you for coming. We'll see you in Woman of the Year at the Almonds. Stay where you are.
I'm humbled by that applause. 